Welcome back everyone to week 28, and I have had another crazy busy week this week, so I'm just going to go through this a bit of an abbreviated version like last week. I'll get the full uh, everything up to date eventually, but just a bit of a timestamp and a bit of a chat this week. That's all I wanted to go through. So as far as names go, we still like Leogold, still like Argonaut, but this week we're going to add some Equinox. Why Equinox? Well, it was going to be Leah Gold, but it was up like 7 or 9% yesterday and or Friday, and we're just not going to add after that. If it goes back down, we might add some more. Um, so Equinox for this week. And in terms of gold, I know I saw that um, crypto, well, Bitcoin at least, has taken off again. And it's interesting because it's a kind of similar fundamental thesis to gold in my view and gold is not looking that great despite global demand but you know the US dollar is held in fairly well recently uh, even though it's kind of broken through um, it well looked like it was going up technically and then it didn't but there's still a lot of fundamental reasons for a safe haven trade in the USD, but we'll see. Will Would that safe haven trade in the USD cause gold to go down if it is a safe haven trade because there's a need of a safe haven? Unclear. If the, the market decided to reverse and head lower, would that cause gold also to go lower? Well, that is another question because in 2008, um, gold was ripping higher in the commodity run before that and was overbought for a long time when it tanked, when the market tanked. I'm not, I'm not calling for a market crash, imminent or not. I'm just saying with the trade war and with the safe haven bid and with the possibility of the trade war hurting, the market. I'm just not sure if gold would tank with the market if the market tanked or not. I I don't know. I'm leaning towards the possibility that it might hold up better than last time, but if everything gets chucked, it's something. So next this week on a hopefully less rambly topic than gold, we have Lucara Diamond. And I just wanted to point out that the, in the diamond industry, some of the other equities, not Lucara, have been performing rather nicely recently. Um, this is because, and as they've been talking about around the industry, the pricing has stabilized and improved, and it was not doing well um, earlier, but it seems to have gotten better. And... It could even get better than that as going forward, there is less supply and there's more supply coming offline. Now, some mines will be producing more in the summer, but that's as a whole, the supply of mined diamonds is trending downwards, which should help the price continue to improve. Lucara, their recent quarter operationally very smooth everything's running as one would hope um, and they're still paying their dividend and they're making money so everything for with them seems to be going pretty much as hoped with uh, in terms of Clara well they're um, working on it working on uh, onboarding new partners so that's progressing now, as for our uranium pick of the week, this week, I guess it will be Bannerman. Not that I don't like any of the others. Still do. Um, nothing's really changed. And the nothing has changed is what has kind of led me towards adding Bannerman in that there's the market is frozen. This has been the case and it's been obvious for a while. And 232, the final resolution, which could come as late as, I don't know, July 14th, 
could unfreeze it. And also the other only other thing, and this is not my uh, this is not my thought. I've read this from a few other people. Um, the only other thing that could break it near term, break it, I mean, break it to the upside, obviously anything could happen upside or downside, but the other key factor I'd be watching is May 31st, um, if there's no labor agreement at the cigar, the mill for Cigar Lake, that would um, choke off the market of another 18 million pounds. Now, could that come online, back online very quickly? Yes, but the market might have a mini market-sized panic attack if suddenly 10% of, well, almost 10% of the demand is just disappears when the market's already in a pretty deep deficit. That could, uh, that's something to watch, basically. I don't know, there's no agreement yet, to my knowledge, so we'll have to see if, um, how that goes and so that's that's one thing to watch and hopefully hopefully i'll have time next week to i'm going to do the technical analysis video on wednesday but hopefully i'll talk about uranium either in in its own video um next week or the week after i hope to have time next week so as i um said when i started this video it's more of an abbreviated version no pictures and flashy stuff. Um, I'll get back to that when I, again, have time. Uh, I've been very, very busy the last few weeks. Hope to, as I said before, get a standalone uranium video done soon, and the TA one and a few others that I'm, I really want to get through, but I've been busy. Portfolio, I mean, it's still you know, in the range that it's been in for the last few months because nothing's really happened. Um, so we, we'll know when when something happens. We'll know. In the meantime, we're happy to add at these prices to these sectors. It, it will change eventually. Some can't not change. Some will probably change, but as a whole, I'm happy with what the portfolio looks like, and eventually we'll we'll see how it goes. And you know, you'll be able to look back and say, "What was this crazy person thinking and talking about these portfolios?" Or, "Wow, okay, maybe he saw something." Well, we'll see in the end. But uh, until next week, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you found something interesting, and have a good one. As always, everyone, please do your own research before making any investment decisions. The uh, This channel shall not be liable for any losses incurred from investment decisions made as a result of information obtained on this channel. Um, good luck with your investments. I'll catch you next time.